Here it is, the last night of the old year, the first night of the new year. Here it is again. The again there is important. The earth rotates, it revolves around the sun, the sun revolves around the center of the galaxy, and the galaxy keeps moving in who knows what direction. Cycles upon cycles. And from the Buddhist point of view, you look back and there's no beginning point. How many times you've been reborn, come back again and again and again. And you look ahead, how many more times? When you think of the big cycles like that, it gets it's pretty discouraging. Because the cycles go up, they go down, and they don't really seem to go anywhere. And they're not precise circles, they're more like loops. We get pretty loopy after a while. And here in the West there's the tradition that we look back, look ahead. That's what January means, basically, it comes from the Roman god Janus. He went ahead facing forward and another face facing back. You want to look back and you want to learn from your mistakes and learn also from the good things you've done. And look ahead and ask yourself, where do you want to go? Because you do have that choice. The universe hasn't ordained it for you. When it's going around and around and around like this, it doesn't seem to have any purpose at all. It just keeps moving which frees you to have your own choice. If the universe had a purpose, you would have to sacrifice your true happiness for the sake of whatever that purpose was. But here you don't have to make that sacrifice. The problem is you're sacrificing the potential for true happiness to other lesser potentials for happiness. That's when there's a problem. But it's your choice. And one of the reasons why we meditate is so we can make the choice better. Because when we meditate, we're going against a lot of the currents of the mind. You make up your mind, you're going to stay right here. And then you figure out and you begin to notice there are things in the mind that are pushing you to go away. Your old habits, your old desires. And you can make up your mind whether you're going to go with them or not. We develop more mindfulness, more alertness. So we can catch these currents in the mind and resist them when they're still weak. And that way we're taking a stance. And then from that stance, we're in a position where we can look ahead and ask ourselves, what do you really want? It is your choice. The Buddha said it is possible to put an end to suffering. And sometimes you look at the path that's involved, and it seems like an awfully long path. But then you look at the alter alternative, not getting out at all. That's even longer. So we try to develop the qualities of the mind, change the balance of power inside, so you don't just keep coming back, coming back. There's that passage in the canon where Ratabala, a monk, is talking with the king. The king asked him, you know, why did you ordain? Your family was wealthy, you hadn't lost any of your relatives, you hadn't lost your health. Everything was positive, everything was good, you had a bright future. Why did you ordain? And Ratabella said, well, there are four Dhamma summaries that he learned from the Buddha. The first is the world is swept away. It does not endure. You can set your mind on all kinds of goals in the world. And if you're looking simply for the goal of what you can accomplish outside, you just see it washed away. This says there's no one in charge. It offers no shelter. The king asks him, what do you mean? I've got a palace here with lots of shelter. He says, do you have a 
recurring illness the king does. He says, and sometimes he's lying around and his courtiers think he's going to die, and it sounds like they're kind of hopeful he's going to die. He says, okay, even though they're your courtiers, can you order them to take some of the pain of the illness and share it out so you don't have to feel so much pain? He says, no, I've got to experience that pain alone. That's what it's meant by the world offers no shelter. The world has nothing of its own. Here again the king asks, what do you mean it has nothing of its own? I've got all these treasuries filled with gold. Ratabella says, could you take them with you when you die? He says, no, I've got to leave them behind. So you really have nothing that is your own. So here it is. The world is swept away. That's inconstancy. Offers no shelter. It's suffering. That's nothing but its own, not self. It's a pretty bleak picture. And yet, he says, we keep coming back for more. We're a slave to craving. That was the fourth of the summaries. The king says, what do you mean I'm a slave? And Dr. Bella says, well, here you are, 80 years old, and you have a kingdom. If someone were to come from the east and say there's a kingdom to the east that you could conquer if you wanted, would you try to conquer it? And the king says, of course. How about a kingdom to the west? Could try to get that one too. One to the south? Take that one too. One to the north? Take that one too. One on the other side of the ocean? Go for that one too. There was no end to human desire. So it's this craving to go back to things that are going to cause us to suffer again and again and again. That's what we're trying to resist as we take a stance. There must be something better. Now the Buddha doesn't say, just give up on having any desires at all. He says, there's a path out. Focus your desires there. And the goal that it provides is something that doesn't age, grow ill, or die. It's not subject to inconstancy, stress, not self lies beyond all these things. That is the possibility. And so you want to tell yourself, this is a good possibility. Now maybe we can't reach it in this lifetime, but you want to make sure that you have a sense of that's your general goal. Then it's good to keep reminding yourself. Of course, when the time comes, when you can't stay in this body any longer, and the mind is going to grasp at anything, you want to be careful you don't just grasp at anything. This is where the principle of determination comes in. This is where Buddhism overlaps with a Western tradition here for the beginning of the new year, is to make a resolution. Buddhism calls it determination, but it's basically resolving that you want to do something. You want to do something worthwhile. So think about where would you like to go? And then act in that direction. So that when the time comes to go, those opportunities will open up for you. And John Fuang told me one time he'd been reading a book about King Ashoka came across the determination that King Ashoka had made, that whatever lifetime he was reborn in, he wanted to have a capability in and of himself, in other words, to be self-reliant, and to have the ability to look after himself. And John Fung really liked that determination. In other words, wherever you go, on the one hand, you want to make sure that you find the Dharma, find the path, but also you have that capability within and of, in and of yourself. You look at the Ajans. They were born into some pretty meager surroundings. And back in those days, if you were born in northeastern Thailand, there wasn't much hope for you. But look at what they were able to accomplish. They found the true Dharma, they practiced. And they were able to benefit greatly. Or in John Lee's phrase, he says, no matter where you're born, if you have discernment, if you have a capability within yourself, then all you need is a machete and you can set yourself up in life. In other words, you don't need a lot of talents, you don't need a lot of wealth. 
what you need is the discernment to figure out how to make the best of your surroundings. This is one of the reasons why we meditate, so that we have the mindfulness and the alertness and the ardency that all go together to create discernment. Mindfulness keeping in mind what you've learned from the past, either from other people or from your own actions. Alertness, watching what you're actually doing, and then ardency, the desire to do it well. When John Lee talks about mindfulness practice, that's where he focuses the quality of discernment is in your ardency, realizing that if there's going to be happiness, it has to come from your actions. And you can't wait around. Whatever you can do now, you do now. We focus on the present moment, not simply to hang out here, but because there are duties to perform here. We want to understand or comprehend what it is to suffer. So we can then find what the cause is. When we see the cause, that's what we let go. We do this by developing the path, and eventually we get to the point where we can realize the cessation of suffering. Those are the duties the Buddha sets out. And notice our duties in line with your, basically your deepest aspiration. You want to put an end to suffering. You want to find a happiness that's reliable. If that's the case, well, these are the duties you take on. No one's imposing them on you. But as the Buddha points out, it's good to know that this is the way things work, because otherwise you're at sea. No guidance at all. But here it is. We're born into this human world without a handbook. And the Buddha's providing us with a handbook, that these are the duties. This is how you do it. Find something of real solid worth. So as you're sitting here meditating, you're performing at least some of these duties, developing concentration, getting some sense of where the suffering is inside and what you're doing to cause it, and learning how to let go of the cause. So this is a good place to take a stance, to develop the qualities you need. and set your sights in the right direction.